Hello, hope all is well by you. I wanted to share with you a thought on this famous Parsha of Bo, where we're on to the tenth plague that God performs miraculously against the Jewish, against the Egyptians. And beforehand, Moshe, Moses tells Paro that around midnight, God's going to come and kill the firstborn. And if it's interesting to note, is that why, and Rashi, the leading commentator, explains why does um, God tell Moses to say around midnight? Just say, at midnight, he's going to come. And the answer given is that the potential is that you're going to have these Egyptians. They're going to look at Moses and say, oh, what a liar. God came at 1201 or 1159, and he said, midnight, he's a liar. So to prevent that, he says, around midnight. And the obvious question is, is that, let's take a step back here. Moses just predicted, wasn't really a prediction, God told him, but he just prophesied in front of everyone, all the Egyptians, the plague of blood. Everything turned to blood. And then there was frogs. And then there was lice, and so on and so forth. Miraculous things that took place, all based on, Moses said, God told me this is going to happen, and then it happened. But all of a sudden now, when it's time for the 10th plague, they're going to say, oh, Moses, you're a liar. You said 12, and it's 12.01. It's like, I'm trying to imagine to myself, how could that be? It's like saying, let's say all of a sudden I come up and say, guys, guess what? Uh, tomorrow, um, in Times Square, a money tree is going to sprout out from the ground, and you can just pick money off of it. Bam, it happens. The next day I say, you know, look at your pets at home, your dogs, your cats, whatever you have. Uh, tomorrow, they're all going to start flying. Crazy things like this. Oh, you know what? On Thursday morning, no breakfast for you because pancakes uh, are, and orange juice are going to fly out from the sky like cloudy with a chance of meatballs, and it happens. And the next day I say, guess what? Uh, tomorrow, um, cars are all going to start flying as well at 12 o'clock. 12.01 hits, 12 o'clock hits, and, and it didn't happen. Everyone's like, oh, what a, what a liar. He's making all these things up. I just predicted crazy acts, miraculous acts. And all of a sudden, it's 12 one and it actually did happen. So you're going to call me a liar? We see a tremendous lesson over here, how far we have to stay away from cynicism and trying to, because um, that's really what the, the media, the attribute is, is that we're focusing on, on a flaw. Sometimes it's to justify truth that hits us in a powerful way that we don't want to accept. Is that when we know something to be true, whether it's something spiritual, the Torah, or something, or something else, and it's so clear to us, sometimes what we do is we'll find a, a flaw in something, a question, and that will base our, our, our entire philosophy and our thinking on that one question. Instead of trying to find out the answers and looking at the overall picture that maybe I don't understand it or maybe there was it, was, it may have been misguided, but we, we do that to ourselves because sometimes the truth um, that's hard to deal with and it's hard to, to work on um, is very powerful. And we really have to stay away from that, sometimes the cynical thinking, or even about a person that we know. They're a great person, and you know everything's great, but you know we, we like to find one little flaw and say, oh, that person's terrible. Well, one second, maybe maybe didn't mean that. Maybe it's, it was a mistake. Let's, let's understand it better, and look, at, look how great they are in general. So I think if we have this approach, um, always to look at the positive and not to, and not to let uh, the great things that happen and uh, things that we see and we know to be true uh, to be affected by small things, um, that are usually um, inconsequential, uh, and uh, we will see beautiful things in our lives. I'd like to wish everyone a Shabbat Shalom, a wonderful week. Take care.